Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And in today's review, we're going to be covering the game Cubitos' expansion, Foul Play. Foul Play is the expansion that introduces the original four-player game to five or even six players, as well as two additional dice. It's also going to include a new double-sided board and additional cards for not only the two new dice added, but also for all the original dice in the base game. Cubitos is a game that you are going to be trying to gather and draft dice and move around this board here getting from the start to the finish and the first person that reaches the finish is the winner. Roll your dice, attempt not to bust, gather your actions and utilize your feet to move across the board while gathering even more dice and get to the end before any other player. Can you do so? Find out in the game. Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course my review. We'll cover all this a little bit of all this because I've actually already covered Cubitos before. We'll mainly cover the expansion portions though. To set up the game Cubitos and the expansion Foul Play, the first thing that you do is choose one of the three different boards. They're double-sided. You can choose the expansion board or one of the original base game boards. Place it within reach of all players and then take out the fan board and place that underneath that board or to the side of that board. Each player is going to take a player uh, board here, it's kind of like a card more so, and place it in front of them. They're going to take the colored meeple that represents the arrow color on their board and place one on the fan board in the bleachers and one on the start space of the main game board. Additionally, you're going to take a number of dice you're going to start off with in your pool, your draw pool. You'll take seven of these light gray dice, two of the dark gray, and based on a random alloc- you can randomly decide what player gets to be the start player, that player will get a start die. It's the big black one with a red insert. Then, additionally, you're going to go ahead and take out all the boxes of dice and tokens. There are two sets of the regular tokens. These are called the fan tokens. They have little gloves to them. You'll pull out these and place them in the top portions of the trays, as well as the currency holders, and you can place them as well. When you're playing with six players, that's why there's four. You can have two on one side and two on the other for the other players. You can set aside the extra meeples you're not utilizing, as well as the extra dice from the dice pool. You may utilize them depending on the cards that you're using, but otherwise move them aside. Then it comes to all the dice trays. Now, with the new expansion, they're going to be adding the pink and the uh, light green or turquoise colored die. You're going to go ahead and simply take out all the dice and place each individual color in each of the individual colored boxes. The boxes are going to tell you how many sides each of the dice have, as well as you can place all the dice right above here so that players can gather them when they choose to buy them. Depending on the game that you're playing, and you can look at the new expansion and it'll tell you not only what all the new expansion stuff does, but also new different sets of cards that can be utilized when playing the game, you'll take those specific cards out and you will place them down next to their dice pools. And if you want to look, you can go into the rulebook for Foul Play, and it will show you the Victory Tours page, which you can then select one of the many um, uh, choices. I'm doing Cult of the New, so that will tell me I need Scrappy Cat, Smart Pup, uh, Shamalama Ding Dong, etc., etc. And you'll take each of those and place them down uh, with their front facing side showing so that you can see the number of different sides the die has, as well as what ability the card or dice has, and of course, how much the die costs to purchase. Once you've done that, you're basically ready to begin the game. Give each player a roll phase and run phase marker that is able to be flipped and set aside the rest of the cards. You won't be utilizing them for this game. The way you play the game Cubitos does not change with the expansion. What you're going to be doing is going through the roll phase first and then the run phase. And everybody will do this all simultaneously. You'll only stop at the end of each of the phases. So the roll phase first. You'll draw all the dice and place them into your roll area. It's the next section on your player board. The number of dice that you take is based on the number of purple hands that you have, and you always start with nine. Additionally, for each player that is in front of you by a number of red lines, you'll increase that number by one. And for each additional red hand that you have, you'll actually get more as well. So if one player is three red lines ahead of you and you have one of these gloves, you will get three plus one plus nine dice from your draw pile. If you do not ever have enough draw dice in order to put into your roll pile, you'll have to take your discard and place them back into your draw, just like you would in a normal deck builder. And additionally, if you don't have a night enough dice period, then you're just simply going to use what you have. From there, you go into the roll phase. The roll phase will allow you to take all the dice that you have from your roll area and you'll then roll them. 
Once you roll them, you'll check to see how many pips you've got. Pips are sides that are not blank, basically. You'll take them and place them in your active space, and from there you'll choose whether or not you want to stop, or if you want to push. Push means you'll continue to roll dice. If you ever have less than two spaces, you can simply push for free. So I could just simply roll these dice again. And you're never going to bust as long as you only have uh, one, uh, or, uh, one or two spaces, one or two pips. But once you activate more than two, when you choose to push again, that can cause you to bust. So if I wanted to, I could stop here with the three different pips that I have, or I can try and push for greater luck. And as long as you roll at least one die on a side that isn't a blank, you can keep rolling. But the moment you roll all your dice and there's no side that is showing, that's when you're going to bust. And here, I busted. Now, the either option was either A, I would have stopped, in which I would keep all my dice in my active area and place all the dice that I did not get as pips in my roll area for next time. Or if I were to have busted, I would actually flip my roll phase over to the run phase and I would move my marker on the fan space one space. And if I ever hit any of these areas that give me value, I'll either get additional currency for later or additional little hands to allow me to roll more dice. However, let's say that I didn't bust and instead I actually actively gain these four, five dice here. Then I'll move to the run phase and I'll wait for everybody else. Once everybody else is at the run phase, I will then go ahead and use my abilities if I have any. Certain dice have certain abilities that give you certain um, unique effects that can take place on the board here, allowing me to kind of push additionally uh, or move dice or re-roll dice or pull dice from my draw in order to roll them. And so you'll do any of those abilities that you can and so will everybody else. And then you're gonna go ahead and resolve combat. Combat are only affected by these red dice here, and these red dice each have their own unique effects. Right here I have the Take That card, which says whoever has the most combat symbols showing um, is going to gain one hand and three currency. Then I'll choose an opponent, and they must give me one of their dice, and then I have to lose a red die. And then from there, combat will end. Then I'll determine how much money and feet I have. We'll then move to the move phase, and I will move my character based on the number of feet that I have. And in this case, I have one foot, so I can take my character and move it one space. Whenever I land on a space and I stop moving, I can use any ability that is underneath my character. If there's no ability, then I don't utilize it, and if I pass the ability up, then it doesn't count as well. I have to land directly on it. These spaces include gaining money, being able to remove dice from my area here, being able to unfortunately have to place all gray dice or the light or dark gray dice back into my pool, as well as a few other effects based on the different boards that you're utilizing. If you're moving, you always have to move to the adjacent space. You cannot move on water unless there's a card or ability that allows you to, but otherwise you'll just simply be moving forward, always forward, and into an adjacent space that is green. After everyone has moved, and by the way, you can move on top of another player. So if I move my sheep four spaces, and then let's go ahead and say this lion moves, and they also have a movement of four, they can just go ahead and place a little character on top. This is the main way you win the game. It's the only thing that's important is moving across the game board and getting to the finish, so remember that. Once movement has ended and all of the characters have moved in certain directions, uh, then what is going to happen is you're going to move to the buy phase. I have one, two, three, four bucks and I can buy anything on this area here that has four or less dollars. This little uh, Shamalama Ding Dong costs three, so I could spend three, take this die, and then place it into my discard. And that's how you're gonna gain more die as you go throughout the game. Additionally, if you do not, um, if you have different effects, like for instance, this is a square one as opposed to these circulars. Circulars always go away as currency at the end of every round, but the square ones you actually take and keep. So I had four, well I'll spend the three that are going to go away and I'll keep the extra one, thusly allowing me to get a die and an extra currency for next round. Then you move all your active die that you've utilized into the discard pile and you'll rinse and repeat. You'll take this run phase and flip it back over to the roll phase. You'll draw a dice. Well, here I only have five, so I'm going to need up to nine. So I'll have to take all my discard die and place them back in my draw. And then I'm going to have to select nine dice. Uh, additionally, 
I am going to have to give up this die here. This die is going to go to the next player in turn order, signifying the next round has begun, in which case we'll start rolling once again. And uh, the player who basically gets to the end of the finish line after completing these rounds over and over again is the winner. The game ramps up to a certain point, and players are going to start moving a lot quicker and getting a lot more die. You'll also notice the die have a ton of different abilities that interact with each other, but I think that's the basic idea for the game Cubitos. And Foul Play has some interesting interesting new additions to that, which I will explain in my review and cover a little bit about Cubitos, even though I've already kind of covered it before. Cubitos kind of reminds me of Quarriers. Uh, Quarriers is a game in which you'll roll dice to gain more dice. Dice will land on their sides and you will be able to attack other players dice with the dice that you have. I love that game. It was one of the first games I got into quite a long time ago before I actually did reviews and I thought that game was spectacular. In fact, it's another game that you can think of which is by the same creator Cubitos, John DeClaire, is Mystic Veil. Mystic Veil is kind of a deck builder of sorts but you're crafting cards to make new cards of the cards that you already have. This is more of creating a dice pool of additional die that you can gain as you progress throughout the game but your main objective isn't to get more dice and currency it's actually to get across the game board here and in fact as the game progresses when it comes to the late game you can actually spend a number of currency to move in fact you can spend four dollars for every additional movement so if I already move five spaces on a turn or maybe I move let's say I move to eight uh, and if I wanted that extra space so that I can lose one of these die here I could spend four money to just simply move here gain the action space get a little farther on the track and if I don't want to buy anything it's a good way to keep continuing on this game board because Movement is what matters. Now, in order to move, you need to have the dice, and the dice all have reflective abilities and combinations based on the dice set that you choose. Like I said, the new expansion has a number of different various options where you can choose uh, to play with. Also, you don't have to play with these specific uh, you know, groups of different dice. You can make up your own if you would like, but I would suggest you do so. Utilize those, but you don't have to. Each of the dice have some unique, really cool abilities, and there are a ton of new cards. And like I said before, there is the green and pink dice sets that you can now include. You don't have to just include them for five and six players. You can have them for the base game as well if you're just playing four players, which just gives you more variety so you can have more dice. And more dice is always great in Cubitos. Gain a coin for each different color of active die you have, not counting the blue and gray ones, uh, or the starting player die. So if you have multiple colors, it can, this, this die kind of wants you to have lots of different colors, which gives you lots of currency, which eventually will allow you to gain new dice that will let you move on the field farther. Um, and, and it tells you the size of the dice. Not every die is going to be just this action. There are two of them that do that, and there is one that just simply gives you two money. Or maybe the Honorable Feathers McDo. It's either going to give you one actual currency, I call these actual currencies as opposed to little monies because they will be saved for you and you can use them when you want, or it's going to give you the ability, and the ability will let you A, instantly gain one foot and use it immediately and if it causes you to land on a reward space you gain the reward so you actually get to kind of move an extra space and then if it lets you hit somewhere you get a bonus and then additionally run just gives you three money so it's two things movement and money and then maybe like this one the munchism this one here lets you run and give it during the run phase it'll give you one foot and it'll give you a money and then additionally there's special die sides that have little dots on them this is a bonus that you can gain if you roll that. And in this case, it'll also give you a hand. And like I said, hands are amazing. One of the strongest things in the game because it'll let you have more dice in your pool when you choose to roll them during the roll phase. And so on and so forth. There's a ton of new and interesting mechanics that go into the game. Uh, the expansion here presents not only the two dice, but there's two unique aspects to them. Uh, one of them is the pink die. The pink die actually has a unique ability that allows you to uh, utilize it, or if you roll the opposite side, you'll utilize the ability, but you will lose a foot during the run phase, meaning it slows you down a bit, but you get to use the ability of the flamingo, or no, vulture, I should say. And so this game just provides you with additional stuff for the different original cards. And of course, each of the original card sets will give you additional abilities as well. I won't go into all of them in specifics, but just know that you have more options to choose from. If you've already bought Cubitos and you want more Cubitos, this expansion is going to give you that. If you want a five and six player option, this expansion will do that for you as well. It gives you the additional player boards, it includes new characters that you can utilize, and it includes additional dice that you can add to the player pool. 
Not to mention there's also a new game board. And on the new game board, it provides you with new spaces. One of them in which is when you land on it, it's kind of a pitfall. You're actually gonna have to take a negative gray die and put it into your pool. And as you know, in this game or in any card game, you kind of want to get rid of the starting dice that you have and just keep the new ones that you've bought. So having to continuously gain new dice like this is not great. And not only that, but Pits and Perils has lots of water, which means with this specific setup that I have, utilizing the ability that lets you move onto water spaces is going to be very helpful, especially when you need to get somewhere closer, but you have to go around the water to avoid it. So now if you build a specific way, you can kind of ignore movement a bit in the game. So you can choose to just go really far with lots of movement or use practical solutions for difficult answers, going from one space to another, going from one space to another, and then cutting out 10 spaces on the game board. It is a nice little addition to the game. Uh, I would say that Cubitos Foul Place introduces a few new extra concepts, additional dice, which is always nice, and if you're looking for more players in your game, it introduces that as well. There's nothing specifically spectacularly new or inventive in this game when it comes to the expansion. You're basically just getting more Cubitos, more abilities, and additional boards. But, but what I would suggest is if you wanna play this game with more players, this is the expansion that you need to get. You have to get this game for five and six players, but otherwise, I don't think you have to have it. You still get all the different varieties. We never even went through half of all the different options, and I played this in the playtesting phase a long time ago. We went through a lot of different dice, a lot of different cards and combinations, and they did a really great job of making the combinations of cards, in my opinion. So if you're looking for just more Cubitos plus additional players, then this is going to be for you. But if you have the base game and you don't feel a need for five and six players and you don't really want the extra dice, you don't think it's worth it or whatever, then it's not something that you need to pick up. This is one of those expansions that I talk about in my reviews all the time where it's like, uh, it's this game and more of this game. If you like Cubitos and you want more Cubitos, grab Foul Play. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cubitos Expansion Foul Play by John DeClaire and AEG. If you're also interested in watching our live streams, we have live streamed Cubitos before, but we will review more games like this one every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can also, if you would like, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification button, and if you want to comment, let us know what you think about Cubitos and its expansion. Did I miss something? Do you disagree? Go ahead and tell me in the comments. As well as, of course, if you would like, go ahead and pick up the expansion for Cubitos. There's a link down below in the description. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I'll look forward to racing with you guys next time.